Something that wasn't talked about much in 1993 was climate change. But today it's considered a factor in the frequency and intensity of storms and droughts and rising sea levels. It might seem that something that affects the entire planet is just too big to deal with, requiring solutions on a scale that just can't be achieved. But that makes me think of a guy I met last year at St. Louis University's Climate Summit. His name is Molina, not the guy with all the gold gloves, the guy with the Nobel Prize. At the Climate Summit, Mexican chemist Mario Molina was presented with a Cardinals jersey with his name on the back, and he seemed to take it in good humor. But his work these days on climate change is serious business, and he is somebody worth paying attention to. When I got a chance to talk to him, I couldn't help but notice the lapel pin, which can be worn only by someone who has a Nobel Prize. You will also see Mario Molina in the PBS documentary entitled The Ozone Hole, How We Saved the Planet. It's about a global environmental crisis and a global response that worked. And Molina was a key figure. He received the Nobel Prize for helping discover that CFCs, which were widely used in aerosol sprays and coolants, were destroying the atmosphere's protective ozone layer. And if you're looking for encouragement that good science followed by good policy can make a difference, consider that the ozone hole over Antarctica that we were so worried about a few decades ago is slowly closing up. And to me, that's a good... Uh, optimism. I use that uh, as an example that it's possible to solve global environmental problems. It's a huge challenge because uh, you have to have practically all the countries in the planet agreeing to do something. And it, that happened already. It can be done. It has been done already once. Uh, were people doubtful when you be first began to expose what was happening? Did they say, gosh, this is too big, we can't do anything about it? Yes. It, uh, in fact, the, the, the first reactions were the opposite. This is too small. We shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> like well, CO2. Some people like, say that about CO2. That's right. So you have all sorts of responses. But then eventually it became clear that uh, we all had to work together. Uh, in contrast with climate change, we were lucky in the sense that it was only a few very large industries that were uh, manufacturing these chemicals, and we were able eventually to, to work with them. Of course, initially they thought, well, well, we won't stop production just because there is some sci scientific theory. But they became part of it, and when the uh, evidence became clear, they of course agreed to, to change. But it, that was not enough, of course. It was diplomacy and working with uh, many different countries Eventually, it, it all uh, worked and... Uh, and it, didn't, it hasn't just stopped, it's being reversed? That's right, that's right. W w you had said not only that you shared, obviously, your findings with the scientific community, but you felt it necessary to share it with the news media and with policymakers. Was that a, a big step for you, or is that something that, that came naturally? No, no, it, it, it was actually a big step because the, uh, the normal thinking of scientists uh, that long ago was that uh, they should only do science. They should let other groups worry about political issues and so on. But it was clear for Sherry Rowland, my colleague and myself, that, that there was nobody else that would take care of this problem, or not at least fast enough. So we convinced ourselves that it was uh, our responsibility to really communicate this, not just to other scientists, but to society as well. Things have changed now because there are uh, environmental organizations and there are groups that do these sort of things. What hasn't changed, though, is that it's still very important for the scientific community to participate actively and to make sure that uh, uh, science doesn't tell us what to do. But science tells us what happens depending on what society does. And so it's very important for science to keep its place and for the scientific community to, to be involved. It's very important to communicate of everything that we're talking about here to society. And we recognize the scientific community has done a very poor job in communicating uh, with people in general. <laughs>